Just type them in and I will answer them for you. Absolutely. All right. We have eight people on. Hopefully a few more people will be popping on here soon. And again, I apologize, but let's go ahead and get started. So uh, we are here today at Willamette Valley Kitchen Company. We are coming to you live. I've never done a live stream before quite like this. Uh, this is exciting, but hopefully the video is looking good. And we are going to make uh, two different kinds of Thai soups, or I should say some of you are going to make one type of Thai soup and others of you are going to make other type of Thai soup. We will see what everyone ends up doing. I am going to make the coconut one, which is Tom Ka Gai. Um, and some of you may be making Tom Yum Gai, which is almost exactly the same soup, but it has uh, just broth instead of coconut milk as the base. These are honestly two of my very favorite soups. I love the coconut milk one the best, but uh, if I'm in the mood for something not quite as rich, then the brothy one is a great way to go. And I feel like the brothy one is really like, you know, sometimes you, you know, people eat chicken noodle soup when they are sick. Um, and this is like chicken noodle soup healthiness to the extreme because it has all those interesting um, herbs and different flavors in it that I just feel like really help everyone feel more well. So it's a good time of year to learn how to make this soup. Um, let's see, there are 11 people on. I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. So welcome again, if you're just popping on here, I am Chef Amy. Apologies for the technical difficulties at the beginning, but you know what, this is a quick soup, so we're just gonna go ahead and get started here. So um, first of all, just a reminder, if you are going to make a pot of rice tonight to go with your soup, just so it's a little more filling, why don't you go ahead and get that started if you haven't already, perhaps you already have. And in addition, we just want to get our broth started. So we're gonna start out with about a quart of chicken broth. Um, you can use store-bought chicken broth, you can use low sodium, you can use regular sodium. It'll just mean that you're going to be slightly adjusting the amount of fish sauce that you put in at the end to season your soup. Um, what I generally use is four cups of water and one tablespoon of chicken better than bouillon. That product, I think it's an excellent product. Um, if I were following the instructions for making four cups of it, I would be putting in four tablespoons, four teaspoons, sorry, <laughs> not four tablespoons, that would be way too much. Um, but I'm putting in a little less than that. So I'm putting one tablespoon, which is three teaspoons. Um, a lot of Southeast Asian soups in Thailand and in Vietnam start out just with creating a flavorful broth base like this. It is very unusual for any type of soup like this to start out with like sauteing or roasting something um, because these types of soups, you want to have a really clean flavor as opposed to like a roasted or browned flavor. If you start your Thai soup out by browning something, browning onions or shallots or garlic, it's not going to taste right. It's actually going to taste strange. So. We don't need to do that and it makes it even easier and quicker for the soup to come together. So again, in my pot over here, I have just uh, basically a quart of broth at this point and I have the burner on. We're heating it up, bringing it to a boil and we are going to create this flavorful broth base um, using um, one really familiar ingredient, garlic, and then some more unusual ingredients that you might have had to traverse to the Asian market to pick up. So I'm going to start out just with my garlic. You want two nice large cloves of garlic. I'm just cutting the little ends off and then these don't need to be minced up. They just need to be smashed so you can just smash them to get the skin off and then just gather up the little smashed pieces and throw them into your broth. Um, we're going to strain this broth after it simmers for maybe 15 minutes. So it's totally fine to just smash the garlic and put it right in here in large chunks. All right, garlic is in there, good to go. And now, as I mentioned, we have some more unusual ingredients. So what really gives this soup a delicious special flavor are four ingredients. We have um, little small Thai bird chilies. They look like that. 
sometimes you'll get a package that has green ones and red ones. And that's just a matter, I guess, of how like ripe they are before they were picked. I don't notice a huge amount of flavor difference between red and green. So I have a wide range of the amount of these Thai bird chilies on here, one to six. Just really depends how spicy you like things. Um, I generally use four at my house and that gives you a pretty spicy soup. And what I do is I just take these, I cut off the little stem and little cap, and then I just slice it in half the long way, just to kind of open it up and expose those little spicy seeds that are in there. And that's all you have to do. You don't need to chop it up any more than that. So we'll cut open. Like I said, I'm using four. So I'm gonna cut open my other three here. Just discard the stem area. All right, there's those in. Now we have some beautiful kaffir lime leaves. These are an item that hopefully if you live in Salem, you found at um, Kuei Huang Market, which is on Silverton Road. I think that's the best place to buy Southeast Asian ingredients in town. And they'll often look like this. So it'll be like two leaves on one little branch. Um, and you want, they come in a little bag if you get them at that store. So I consider each of these two if they're together like that. So I'm gonna get four of those little chunks of two and put eight of them in there. If you want to, you can kind of crush them in your hand just to release some of the oils before you throw them in. All right, so that ingredient gives a beautiful kind of floral um, citrus aroma. Our next ingredient is a wild one. If you've never cooked with this, it's called galangal. That's what it looks like. Um, it looks kind of like ginger root, right? Similar to ginger root, but it does not taste like ginger root and ginger root is not a good substitute for this. This has a really unique kind of, it sounds weird, like it doesn't sound particularly appetizing to say this, but I would say it has a menthol type of flavor that just gives a lot of brightness to this soup. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead, I have, I had a tiny bit more than an inch of that root, but I'm just gonna use the whole thing. Um, and I just sliced it into thick coins just to expose the um, inner flesh so that it releases flavor into our broth. Throw that in there. Now I have two stalks of lemongrass here. So this might be the most well-known of our four special Thai ingredients because this is more widely available. And again, it just has a wonderful citrus, um, really lemony, almost like citronella-y type of aroma and flavor. I have cleaned off the stalks. Um, if you have never done that before, what you wanna do is trim a little bit off the wide end. And then if you have, this one is nice and clean now, but if you had some dirty or bruising on this, you just can peel off a layer once you trim off the end, like so. And then once you get down to where it all looks nice and clean and smooth, um, we are gonna take the back of our chef's knife, not the front, so the back end, where it's nice and heavy, and just kind of pound on your lemongrass a little bit. Again, that's just kind of bruising it to release some of the essential oils. And once it's pounded, you can cut your lemongrass into maybe two inch pieces, just big chunks. Like so, throw that in your broth as well. Um, the last ingredient is just to kind of give this a well-rounded, delicious flavor. It's not necessary, but I really think it gives you a lot of flavor in a very short amount of time. If you look at the ingredients of your red curry paste, there's my red curry paste, you'll notice a lot of these same ingredients that we just put in here, but it just kind of boosts up the flavor of your broth nicely um, with minimal work. So I'm putting in about two teaspoons of the red curry paste. I use this big tub 
because we make a lot of curry at our house. The brand is Made Ploy. Like that. However, if you um, don't want to buy this big of a tub because you only use a few spoonfuls each time you use it, um, they have small little cans. Like a, if you have cats, it's like the size of a Fancy Feast can um, called May Sri, M-A-E-S-R-I. So hopefully some of you found that. Or more widely available at regular supermarkets now is Thai Kitchen brand, which comes in a small glass jar. So if you don't want this much, there's other options. Just go ahead, everything is in the broth now, our broth base. So just go ahead and stir that and um, kind of break up the curry paste. And just kind of keep an eye on your broth. Um, we're going to simmer it for 15 to 20 minutes just to let all the flavors come out of those vegetables that we have added. And um, yeah, as we are letting it simmer, we will prepare the other ingredients of the soup. So the soup comes together really nicely because basically in the amount of time that it simmers, you can get everything else ready and then it only needs to cook for a few minutes after that and it is ready to go. So just adjust your temperature if you need to on your stove. Um, you want it at a gentle simmer. You don't really want it at a hard boil. So if it's up too high, turn it down a little bit, just so you see a few little bubbles, a small amount of movement on the top of the broth. Okay, let's prepare our remaining ingredients. So you have a choice to make now, as I mentioned in the instructions, um, whether you wanna to make Tom Ka or Tom Yum. Tom Ka is my favorite and it's the richer one. Of course, that's the one I like. And that uses coconut milk or coconut cream, your choice, um, versus Tom Yum, which is the exact same soup, but where we would be adding the two cans of coconut milk, you would just add a, an equal amount more chicken broth. Um, so obviously Tom Ka is much richer. Tom Yum is more healthy and light. So it just depends what you are interested in. Um, I mentioned on here, if you are making Tom Ka, you can definitely use coconut milk or coconut cream. The coconut cream will just make a richer end product. You can use one of each. Sometimes I do that if I just want it kind of right in the middle. Um, and I think I listed my favorite preferred brands of coconut milk slash cream in your shopping list. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, yeah, so basically if you are using coconut milk, just have your two cans open and ready to go and we'll put those in in a little while. If you are using broth and making Tom Yum, you just want to have another approximately three cups of broth ready to go. If you're using chicken better than bouillon, you can do three cups of water to one to one and a half teaspoons of the bouillon paste. So just have that ready. Before we add that in though, we are going to strain our broth. If you um, have this soup at Thai restaurants, very, very often they don't strain out these pieces of galangal and lemongrass and kaffir lime leaf, um, which is definitely the authentic and traditional way to do it. But I just figure, <laughs> I don't know, I just, I just like to eat it faster because <laughs> so, it's so delicious. So I like to strain out those big chunks out of the broth since they are not really edible. And after they have simmered, they have served their purpose. And I just quickly strain it and then put the strained broth back in the pot and carry on. And that way you don't have to watch out for any weird bits while you're eating your soup later on. Okay, so have your coconut product or your broth ready. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention is, um, so the Tom Ka, of course, stands for the coconut soup, and Tom Yum is more just like a brothy, hot and sour soup. And then the third word in the soup is guy on both of them, and that means chicken. Um, so these both are going to have chicken in them, but you can definitely make this soup with other proteins. If you want um, to use shrimp, that's always a popular option, and then you would call your soup Tom Ka or Tom Yum Gung, G-O-O-N-G, that means shrimp. Um, it's also commonly eaten with tofu. So whatever you want to put in here. But we are going to do chicken and we're gonna prepare our chicken and our mushrooms next. Cause those are the next items that we'll need to go in. 
So I have two boneless, skinless chicken breasts here. If you come to my classes or watch my classes online in the past, I very rarely use chicken breast, like really not very often. But in this particular soup, I think chicken breast is definitely the way to go. Um, this soup is so just delicate and light and it doesn't need the extra like richness and um, kind of meatiness of chicken thigh. So chicken breast is great, it's perfect, and it also cooks really fast. So that's goes along with our general theme. So I have my chicken breast and I just cut it in half lengthwise, like so. And now I'm gonna slice it in the other direction. Um, fairly thin. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be worried about getting it like paper thin, but maybe quarter inch slices, I think are about right for this. Hopefully you can see I did grab another cutting board. So that's my chicken cutting board. And I can get that out of the way for the rest of our vegetable prep. I'm just gonna transfer this sliced chicken back over to this plate and do the second one. I feel like this soup serves four to six and it really depends whether you're serving it with rice and whether you are serving it with other dishes. Um, if you want, you know, like a big giant ramen or pho size bowl of this soup, then it's probably only going to serve four. <laughs> but especially if you're making the coconut version, that might be a little much. Um, that would be a little rich to have that much. So I like to have a smaller bowl and a bowl of rice along with it and maybe a salad. <laughs> if I'm feeling especially feisty. Okay, so my chicken is sliced into bite-sized pieces. I am just going to get this chicken cutting board out of here and give my knife a quick wash. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back with a clean knife. Um, the other ingredient that we're going to put in at the same time as the chicken breast is some sliced mushroom. And I think it's really interesting. I always like to see this. Um, I put the chicken and mushrooms in at the same time and I like to cook it just until the chicken is cooked all the way through, which doesn't take very long. It takes like four minutes maybe. Um, and I don't know, just in my mind, I think of mushrooms as being really, really delicate and even more delicate maybe than chicken, but the mushrooms actually, you'll see when the soup is done, are less cooked than the chicken. Like the chicken is obviously cooked, it's cooked all the way through. And the mushrooms are like almost still a little crunchy or something. So I think that's kind of fun to think, oh, mushrooms actually take longer to cook than chicken. So I just have about, eight ounces of cremini mushrooms that I have cleaned. Um, I wiped them off with a damp paper towel earlier. You can use really whatever your favorite type of mushrooms are for this soup. Um, I often just use cremini or button just because they're easy and easy to find. Um, but you could use oyster would be really lovely. Um, you could use shiitakes. They would give it a different flavor, but I think it would be good. Um, and often if you go to the Asian market, they'll have mushrooms called birch mushrooms, which are like little round white mushrooms. And those are a common one that you might see in this, in this soup. So experiment with different mushrooms. It's fun. Um, you can cut them again, also kind of how you like, how you prefer your mushrooms to be. But I like them cut kind of the same as the chicken in thick ish slices. So like quarter inch thick slices like so I am just gonna 
quickly tap, 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 and slice through all these mushrooms real quick. Cutting mushrooms is the perfect opportunity to practice using the tip of your chef's knife. It is meant for delicate items like these mushrooms. And I think it makes kind of a fun professional chef kind of noise when you're slicing up your mushrooms like that. Keep an eye over there on your broth, wherever your broth is. Mine is to my left. And I'm trying to get the temperature just right, but you'll probably see me fiddling. I keep adjusting it because it keeps getting a tiny bit too high and then a tiny bit too low. Again, you just want a gentle simmer. Okay. Mushrooms are sliced. Put them over next to the chicken. Now we have two more ingredients that I think we can get cut up before we strain our broth. And then once we put the chicken in, we can work on our garnishes and our seasonings. So our other two main like soup ingredients are tomato and shallot. Um, this time of year, I just get Roma tomatoes that are as ripe as they can be. Or you could also get like those grape tomatoes or cherry tomatoes that are sometimes somewhat good tasting at this time of year. I know it's the middle of winter tomatoes, meh. But, um, but tomatoes, even kind of underripe Roma tomatoes are really good in this broth. Like just something about them is just really delicious. So I like to include them even though it's winter time. Um, and I'm going to just trim off the little ends. And then I like to cut the tomatoes up fairly chunky. I usually balance them up on their ends and quarter them like so. And then just cut through like three or four slices to get the right size that you want. So a chunk about like that. You don't want these to just dissolve into the broth. You want them big enough that they're going to hold their shape after they've been gently simmered. All right. And then in contrast are shallots. Um, these you want nice and thin, probably as thin as you can slice them. It's kind of unusual to put shallot into a soup at the end. But for this soup, that is what we're looking for. It's almost a garnish. It's almost a raw garnish, but it, we just want it to simmer just for one minute right at the end. So you want them sliced up pretty thin. So I have my shallot all peeled here, and I'm just going to slice it as thinly as I can into little rings. Um, these are the European type of shallots. Um, and there are Asian shallots also. They have Asian shallots at Kuei Huang available for sale, but I don't often buy them because they, you have to buy a whole bag of them. Whereas these at the regular grocery store, I can just buy the amount that I need. So there is a slight flavor difference, but it's like, I can hardly really even express it in words. They do taste different, but not that different. Here's my second shallot, and I'm, again, just going to slice it thinly. So I guess what I'm saying is, regardless of what type of shallots you bought, they're going to be great. And you can just throw your sliced shallots right into the bowl with the tomatoes, because they're going to get added in at the same time. All right. We have all of our main ingredients prepped here and ready to go. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention that I didn't get a chance to earlier is especially, um, I, I mean, I don't know where all of you are 
shopping or uh, watching us from right now, but if you are in Salem, I know that Kuei Huang sells the ingredients for the soup in these little baggies, so you don't get to really choose the amount that you want. Um, but I have found that Generally speaking, I can make two batches of this soup out of the packages that she sells in. Um, so what I will often do is make one batch and then make a little baggie and I'll call it like Tom Ka flavor pack and I'll put it in, the, put all the stuff I need in it and put it in the freezer. So that way I feel like I'm wasting this stuff left less. Um, so I'll do that with the lemongrass and the leaves and I'll just get a piece of gall and gall that I know is twice as big as the one I actually need and I'll only use half of it. Now the chilies on the other hand, they come in a really big bag. Um, so you'll probably have even more than two batches worth. Um, at my house, we like spicy things. So we actually chop the remainder of these up and put them in this jar of fish sauce that we keep in our fridge. And that's like our garnishing fish sauce. So it's extra spicy. I don't know if you're into that, um, otherwise, you can just use them in your regular cooking wherever you would use a different kind of hot chili. Just keep in mind that they're very spicy. So if it calls for one jalapeno, you'd probably only need one of these, even though it's so much tinier, it would be like a similar amount of heat. All right. Let's take a look at our broth. I didn't have an actual timer on this broth. And in fact, I don't usually when I cook this, but I figure that it generally takes me 15 to 20 minutes to get this stuff prepared. So once I have these four items all prepared, um, I figure my broth is good and ready to strain. So I just have a setup here with a bowl and a strainer, and I'm gonna pour the broth through it, discard the solids, and then pour the liquid broth right back into the same pot. If you have a skimmer type of tool instead, you could also just use that and skim out the, the parts. Either way, it works fine. Okay. So there's my strainer with my stuff I don't want. And there is my broth. I'm just pouring that right back into the pot. Perfect. Okay. I hear Jessica, I see Jessica saying it smells so good and I agree, Jessica, this is a really great combination and hopefully it's reminding you of your favorite soup that you used to get takeout but now you're just gonna know how to make it. So that's awesome. All right, so now is the time where you need to decide which soup you're making. Hopefully you've already decided that and you have your liquids ready, um, but we are going to either add in our coconut product, two cans of coconut milk and or coconut cream, or you wanna add in three more cups of chicken broth. I am going to add in coconut. And one thing I want to mention is if you are using coconut, um, coconut milk is kind of delicate. So if you have chosen to use coconut, it is more important that you keep an eye on the temperature of this soup. You don't want your coconut milk to come up to a hard boil once you add it. You just want to keep it at a gentle simmer and be kind and gentle to it. They even say, and I, need to do some more experimenting with this to know if it's really true, but they even say that you should only stir your coconut milk in one direction, just to be gentle to it. You know, if you stir all violently all over your soup, it might um, be more likely to break apart. Um, so if you just stir it gently in one direction and be kind, theoretically, that should be more gentle and give you less likely to have any curdling issues. So um, I don't know if you can see me kind of struggling here. <laughs> the reason I'm struggling is a great reason. And this is why I like this Trader Joe's coconut product so much is that it has a lot of this rich fat in it. 
um, which in this case, in my opinion, is a very good thing. Uh, the more of that thick coconut solid fat that you put in here, the richer your, your uh, tonka is going to be. And I like it to be really rich and creamy. Okay, I'm stirring in one direction and I'm just letting that melt down. Those little solid pieces of coconut fat are starting to dissolve. Um, if you're adding in chicken broth, obviously this is a lot less of a process, just pour it right in there. And then you just want to bring this back up to a simmer. So just stir it gently, bring it up to a simmer. If you are using broth and making tom yum, you can turn it up on high and just bring it up to a boil really quickly because there's nothing that can have any issues. But if you are using coconut, I would keep it more at like medium to medium high, somewhere in that range, and just be a little more gentle and watchful of it. All right. I don't like to add my chicken and mushrooms until I actually see it simmering. And it's not quite there yet, but I'm keeping a close eye. Um, I did mention on the grocery list that I one thing I don't recommend is getting light coconut milk. And it's not that I think it's bad or is going to taste bad. Honestly, what it is is just it's basically like you're buying a half a can of coconut milk and a half a can of water. And who wants to pay for water? So I would say if you are really trying to keep an eye on your fat content in this soup, but you do want a little bit of coconut flavor, try using just one can of coconut milk and a cup and a half of broth or whatever ratio you want. As long as the amount of liquid stays the same, you can use less of the coconut and still have that hint of flavor. But I just feel like light coconut milk is a waste of money, basically. Okay, it's at a simmer. Hopefully yours is too. So I'm going to stir in my chicken and my mushrooms. Once you stir in that chicken, if it was cold when you put it in, you might want to bump your heat up a little bit. But again, just keep an eye. Add in the mushrooms as well. I like this soup to have lots of goodies in it. So hopefully you're starting to get an idea that this is going to have lots of yummy ingredients in here to eat. It's not just broth. It has lots of fun stuff. I feel like the um, the ingredients I've chosen here, the mushrooms and tomatoes, are pretty standard and like you'll see them in most Tom Ka's or Tom Yum's that you that you order. Um, but absolutely if you want to go with a different kind of vegetable, go for it. Like the sky's the limit. Just remember to put your vegetables in in the proper order. So vegetables that will need more cooking, put them in first, maybe along with the chicken, versus vegetables such as our tomatoes that just need a little bit of light cooking. Um, they can go in right at the end. If you wanted to make the soup a little more filling, I think something really delicious to add would be um, some squash, some winter squash. And if I were going to do that, I would cook the squash first. Cut it up into little cubes and cook it first and then just add it in just to heat it up. Um, but I think that would be really yummy and that would make the soup more filling without having to have rice alongside it. Soup would also be great with greens in it. It would change it a lot, but I'm always a fan of greens. So if you are too, go for it. Use your creativity and Put in whatever sounds good to you. I'm just kind of gently stirring this and keeping an eye on it. And mostly I'm looking for little pieces of chicken 
just to kind of um, see if they have gone opaque and look like they're cooked through. While we are waiting for that to happen, we can get our garnishes and seasonings ready. So you're gonna need some limes. Um, when you're seasoning this soup, you want to create a balance of sourness, sweetness, and saltiness. And then the other balancing ingredient is spiciness, but we already have our Thai chilies in the broth. So the spiciness is taken care of, but we need to work on our sourness, sweetness, and saltiness. So we want to add lime, sugar, and fish sauce to get that proper seasoning. Um, I mentioned there are one to two limes. I have like a gigantic lime today, so I'm only using one, and it feels like it's really juicy too, but you might want two at your house. Um, and then you want some fish sauce for salt. A couple things I want to mention. First of all, my two favorite brands of fish sauce are squid fish sauce for a lower priced good fish sauce. This whole big bottle was $2.19. And then I also really enjoy Red Boat fish sauce, more expensive and more high quality. Um, this bottle is $9.39 for a smaller bottle. Um, but they're both really good. I often use squid when I'm cooking and Red Boat when I'm um, making an uncooked sauce. And I probably will do that today and use squid. I see my broth getting a little hot over here. And again, I'm just protective of my coconut milk, so I don't want it to cook too hard. And I'm looking at my chicken and it looks cooked through to me. So that's great. That means we can add our tomato and shallot. So go ahead and dump those in. Give that another good stir. After the tomato and shallot go in, you really only need to cook it for maybe one more minute. So don't lose track of that. So we have our lime. We have our fish sauce, and then sugar is optional. Sugar is definitely meant to be in this soup for a, um, a traditional taste. You don't need very much though, maybe just like one to two teaspoons for the whole pot. Um, if you, the reason I say it's optional is because this is actually a very popular soup to make for people who are doing keto cooking right now because everything in here is keto except for this small amount of sugar. And I think this soup tastes fantastic even without the sugar, but I don't have much of a sweet tooth. So I will say it tastes more balanced with the sugar, but it still tastes really good without the sugar. So I'll leave that up to you. The traditional type of sugar would be a sugar called palm sugar that comes in these little half sphere, hard pieces of sugar. Um, I don't tend to use it very often because you usually have to buy a big package of it. And I just, if I'm just making this soup once, I don't want to buy the big package. So I usually just use actually white or brown sugar. I have used both and found that they both taste very good. So I'll leave that up to you. Tonight I'm just using plain white sugar. Um, we are onto our seasoning time right now. So it has definitely been one minute since we put the tomatoes in. I'm gonna go ahead and take the soup off the burner. I don't wanna overcook those lightly cooked vegetables. I recommend you taste the broth before you add these ingredients, just so you know what you're dealing with. Mm. So to me, it already tastes super, super delicious. Um, but it's going to taste even better with just a little bit more seasoning. So let's go ahead. I think I'm going to go light on the sugar. So I'm just going to use one teaspoon. Coconut, it, coconut milk has sweetness. So if you, are, if you use coconut milk, there's already sweetness there. Um, and I will mention the seasoning can vary depending on whether you use the coconut milk or the broth. The coconut milk tends to kind of suck up saltiness a little bit more. So um, you might need a little more fish sauce with the coconut milk version versus a little less with the broth version. 
going to go ahead and add some lime juice here. Maybe you just add your seasonings and gradually like I'm doing. So you saw I put in uh, just one teaspoon of sugar, which is all I'm really planning to put in. And I put in half of that big, huge lime, which might be equivalent to one lime in reality. And I'll probably put in one tablespoon of fish sauce to start out with. And then give it one more taste. The fish sauce, if you are not used to cooking with fish sauce, will smell stinky by itself. But once it is stirred in here, it gives it a really fabulous savoriness as well as saltiness. Okay. I can just go ahead and use my spoon again since the soup is for me anyway. <laughs> so one time I can double dip. Okay, hopefully you're experiencing just like what these different flavorings do and that's a lot of fun. I think I want a little more lime. And I might actually just hold it on the fish sauce for me personally. Um, you can always serve fish sauce at the table to your guests if they want a little splash more. So no need to go overboard with the salt seasoning at this point. All right. All we have left is just two quick raw garnishes. I have two scallions that I clean. I already cleaned them, but I'm just going to thinly slice them. You can decide whether you want to. Um, just throw these into the soup and stir them in, or whether you want to serve like little bowls of each garnish at the table. And in fact, another option that I like to mention is um, if you're unsure about your guests and their spiciness level, you could go with a lighter amount of Thai chilies back at the beginning of this recipe, and then mince up some more of the Thai chili and serve that at the table in a little bowl so that people could add what they like. I have a handful of cilantro here, and I'm going to mince that up as well. We're just about done here. Does anybody have any questions that they want to put into the chat? Oh, I'm looking. I'm not seeing anything popping up. It's an easy recipe, so hopefully there aren't too many questions. I know there's a slight delay on this feed, but I think that it should have been enough time. I think there was like a, I don't know, a seven second delay or something. You guys probably didn't even know that, but I'm mm -hmm. here to tell you. Okay, I stirred in my cilantro and green onions, and this soup looks fabulous. I'm going low 